Hi everybody, this is a very impromptu tutorial. As you can see I've been working on this um, dragon page from Joanna Basford's beautiful Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. This, for a change, isn't my practice book. You are catching me working live. So I'm in my book with all of my finished pages. You can see the other dragon that I did. Um, chandelier. So you're actually seeing me work live in my book which is unusual because usually I work in my practice books. See my, my double page? I don't know if you remember that one. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I've literally just in the last 20 minutes posted this work in progress. Um, I've seen quite a few posts recently on our group with uh, this shadowing technique and it's proven to be really popular at the moment and I thought this was a perfect page to try it out on because it really makes I'm sure you'll agree it really makes the butterflies um, leap off out of the page. It really does, and it's so simple and effective to do. So um, I'm going to just quickly finish off the butterflies on the opposite page in my book and show you how to do it. So I'm just going to move this, move to this side, and what I'll do, I think, is um, we'll, we'll try it on this one. So if I just zoom you in a little bit. I'll move my book over. What does that look like? I'm going to be working on this little fella here. Yeah, I think that's fine. So I've got three pieces of kit. Very, very simple pieces of kit. I've got a piece of tracing paper. This is actually just kitchen greaseproof paper. It's not proper um, art paper of any kind. I have just a normal HB pencil, which I'm actually going to give it a quick sharpen and I have my um, Prismacolor 70% French grey coloured pencil and that's all you need. Now the reason I'm going to use this tracing paper is because I'm not very good at freehand drawing and when you're creating a shadow for these butterflies you kind of need to get the same shape as the butterfly so it's it's uh, it's quite this is quite a neat technique. So here we go. Very very simply got my tracing paper over the butterfly and I'm just going to carefully draw the outline. Now I don't need to do the patterns on it, I don't need to do the inside of the wings, all I need is the outline. Like that. Like so. Easy, easy peasy. Turn your piece of uh, tracing paper over and what you want to do is match the shape of that um, outline that you've drawn to the butterfly and what you're going to do you're going to um, kind of offset it a little bit so I'm going to offset mine to the right hand side so you can probably see I think yes you can you can see the tracing paper outline and you can see the butterfly underneath and as with all kind of tracing techniques all you do and I'm, I don't need to do this for the whole outline all I need to do is do it for the bits that are sticking out in shadow so I don't need to do this for the whole pattern of the butterfly because you'll go over the butterfly underneath which isn't the idea so I'm pressing on quite hard like this and when I take the tracing paper away you'll see that I have the perfect shape of that butterfly easy so I'm going to take my, my grey pencil. The reason I'm using grey is I, I, I did have a little bit of a, a play around and I tried it in black first and it looks a bit severe because um, the shadows look better in a grey colour. It kind of looks um, a little bit a little bit too severe if it's if it's got a black shadow on it and you can probably hear Freckle in the background there barking at something or other. Um, but you need a deep grey colour I think to be able to make that shadow stand out. So I've got French grey, doesn't really make any difference what, what type of grey you use. French greys tend to be kind of warm and have a little brown in it. But as long as you've got a, a dark grey colour, you can use any, any type of brand, any pencil. So I'm just going to take the line that I made with my tracing. And this is why I need to trace it, because if I didn't have an outline, my freehand drawing isn't good. Well, it's okay, but it's not great. And then we literally just colour that shadow in. So bear with me. 
And then what we'll do is we'll colour in the butterfly because that makes it look even more effective. And it just makes them look like they're jumping off the page. And I've seen quite a lot of you guys doing this recently and I thought, I want to go at that. And I don't know how you guys achieved it, but this is the easiest way for me. I saw um, my friend and one of our really active members, Maggie Cook, um, recently, I think in the last couple of weeks, posted a page from Lost Ocean, I believe it was, with uh, with the same effect on her fish. And it's absolutely stunning. I don't know how you did it, Maggie, but this is how I'm doing mine anyway. Right, OK. So you can see that, that just makes it look like it's hovering above the page. So I'm going to let's move those out of the way and I'm going to get, I think we're going to do this one in green. So I've got my, my green tray pencils. I'm going to use these greens here. So I'm going to take my chartreuse, my spring green, my grass green, my peacock green and my yellow chartreuse, I think. Nice and bright. And the reason I'm using bright colours is because if you used a darker colour next to the shadow, it doesn't stand out as well. So uh, lighter butterflies against this dark background make the effect even better. Um, now this can be as random as you like, as random as you like. I'm just going to take this family, this palette of colours. And you don't even have to have a family of colours, you can colour this butterfly anyhow you want. But I'm going to use this family of greens that I like because it's one of my favourite palettes. Uh, where's my peacock green? There it is. I'm just going to carefully fill in all these little bits and you'll see that it really does look like it's flying over the paper. Now what I think I'll do for these big wings is rather than block colour I think I'll do a little bit of blending. So I'm going to take my uh, spring green and my grass screen and I'm gonna just make myself a little blend line there light touch firmer behind it light touch blend line firmer behind it just gone over slightly there uh, tombow mono eraser grass screen gently gently over this blend line a little bit of firmer up here Back to spring green, firm hand over all of it, perfect blend. Quickly repeat on this side, lightly over that to start with. Firmer touch on that edge, back to my spring green, firm touch over this blend. And that's it. And I'm sure you agree, it's so easy and so effective. So I really hope you give it a try. And I'd love to see what you come up with. Bye for now, guys.